Hey, hey, hey. Time for another out of this world story from our space. There's a special place in hell for those who mistreat children. Today on our space, it gets a bit crispy up in here. Did someone turn up the heat? I'm completely lost because I just found out that my 42 male wife, 36 female, of 12 years has been having an affair from the police who called me in for questioning involving the assault of her lover. I don't know what I'm doing right now. I don't know if this is the right sub or even if I should be posting this, but I don't have a clear mind right now and I'm here to ask some direction. I've been married to my wife for 12 years. We have an amazing 11 year old son. Until last night, I thought we had a good marriage. I thought I was always really good to her. We have no money problems, no intimacy problems, and I have never taken her for granted. I honestly wake up every morning and thank God she's my wife. Now I don't know what to think. I got a call from my local police department as I was getting off work yesterday. They asked if I could come to the police station as soon as possible. I panicked. I asked if something had happened to my wife or son, but they said not to worry, just to get to the station as soon as possible. When I got there, they put me in a room with a table and some chairs. They asked me my name, which I gave. Then they started asking all these questions about a guy my wife works with. I haven't seen or spoken to this guy literally since December of 2019 at my wife's company Christmas party. The two officers kept asking me things like, how long have you known? And how did you find out? The only answer I could give was, what are you talking about? After about an hour of this, I just stopped answering their questions and kept asking where my son and wife were and were they safe. We just kept going around and around until after about two hours on and off because they would periodically leave the room for 15 to 20 minutes, then come back and start it all over again like some cheap cop show. The last time they came in, the cop handed me a tablet and showed me a video of my wife and the guy from her work having sex. I don't remember much right after that. I just remember screaming, what the F is this? Over and over again. I had a full blown panic attack right there in the middle of the police station. The police had a paramedic check me out and he said my blood pressure was something like 170 over 110. He wanted me to go to the hospital, but I refused. And I said, I need to find my wife and son. After I calmed down, the officers explained that the guy in the video had been having an affair with my wife and apparently several other women. He had been found that morning in his driveway, beaten, raped, and set on fire. He was still alive, but in critical condition, and they didn't know if he would make it. His wife had given them permission to go through his phone and computer, and that's where they found the video of my wife. They asked me where I was that morning, and I told them the gym, then work about 10 minutes from the gym. At that point, they said I could go, but that I might not want to stay at my house because they didn't know if his affair with my wife could be why he was attacked. They also said my wife wasn't the only person he was having an affair with. That's when I rushed home. My son was staying with our neighbors, so I got him and went home. We packed some clothes and his laptop for school. I grabbed my gun and we headed to my parents' house, 45 minutes away. I still haven't heard from my wife. Her phone is going straight to voicemail. I've called the officer who gave me his card and he said she is at the hospital with the guy she's been cheating with. I'm sitting here in bed with my son on one side of me and my 38 on the other. My dad is sleeping in his chair in the living room with a shotgun across his lap and I've not slept in over 30 hours. I don't even know where to start. Anything would be helpful right now. Any advice or ideas? I'm in a fog. Ask for advice and ideas? The community will respond. The sound of Keck goes first. Well, this is pretty wild, but not uncommon. I believe you know the answer to this one, but it just seems so, what the F right now? To break it down, wife cheated on you. Guy gets beaten up to an inch of his life. Police question you, tell you your wife is having an affair. You blow up, righteously. Frantically call her, want her to answer. Hasn't answered you, nor called you at all is at the hospital with the guy she cheated on you with. What you need to do is instead of having a 38 in your hand, you need a phone in your hand. Get a divorce lawyer and have these police officers properly document how she's with the guy she cheated on you with and to get evidence of that sex tape they made. This will be uncontestable evidence that makes sure she won't get jack crap when you divorce. You'll be glad you did this. This will also help with custody arrangements down the line as well. I know it's a hard pill to swallow, but she doesn't love you. Imagine the love of your life in the arms of another man who treated many women like his toys. 
you heard it firsthand of how many women he effed over. She was worried about his safety over your own. But I know you're hurting very much. But realize that if this gets really messy, divorce-wise, your kid will literally be shattered beyond belief. It's your duty to bring this horrendous BS to a swift end so she can't raise hell back. I hope you'll get a good night's sleep soon, both for you and your kid. It sounds like you're all he has, besides your parents. The OP replies, Yeah, my parents are up now, and my mom has been in to check on us. I think what you said is the best plan. At this point, I don't even want to know any more than what I found out yesterday. I'm sick and disgusted by this whole situation. 14 years together, down the drain. But I got my son out of it, so it was every bit worth it. Complete entry says this. Get a freaking lawyer. These cops already like you for a suspect. Practice your effing right to remain silent. Do not even go into the effing interview room again. They were trying to walk you into confession here. Um, yikes. Yes, definitely the lawyer up. This sounds like a nightmare. Of course, the police questioned you that way. The comments aren't wrong when they say they definitely suspect you. They were trying to get you to make a false confession. This is an absolute dumpster fire. And what a terrible way to find out that your wife was cheating. Update. I attempted to post this on Saturday 1219, but it didn't go through. And I got blocked from reposting because I asked a yes no question. Anyway, here it is again. I'm working out a bit, so I may not be able to reply that much right now. My original post was removed, but a lot of people messaged me and asked for an update. I thought I would fill everyone in on what has happened this week, because the replies I get helped me so much. I really feel like I owe this community a big thank you for helping me get my head on straight and pointing me in the right direction to get everything done as fast as possible. For those people who said my post was fake, my only reply is, I wish. From the bottom of my heart, it was. Sometimes the truth is stranger than fiction. For those who said they couldn't find a news story, apparently due to the nature of the attack, a lot of information was withheld. Even our local news outlets had only reported it as an assault, and it was nothing more than a blurb on the nightly news. For those who implied or directly stated, the police wouldn't do that, you are 100% wrong, because they did. I found out from my lawyer that police can literally do or say anything they want, especially if you aren't under arrest, short of direct threats of harm. That includes lying directly to your face, which they did. It turns out my wife wasn't at the hospital with her lover when I contacted the detective. She had been admitted to the hospital psychiatric facility much earlier in the day, while he was still in surgery. I don't know why they would lie about that, but they did. Needless to say, the situation has caused me to become very suspicious of law enforcement. After I woke up that afternoon, I contacted my uncle's law partner, who was a family friend. He also came to my parents' house and sat down with me to go over my options. His entire law firm is now representing me, both in the divorce and criminal defense. That day, Sunday, he got an emergency custody order and a protective order against my wife for me, my son, and my parents. Our court date is in 60 days. The police served her on Monday as she was leaving the psych hospital. According to her brother, who is a close personal friend of mine, she did not take it well. She is staying with her parents for the time being. I still haven't talked to her and she hasn't made any attempt to speak to me either. Whether that's due to shame, indifference, or the order of protection, I don't know. But I'm glad of it all the same. My wife is not the person I thought she was and I'm ashamed of myself for not seeing it sooner. I had to tell my son something, so I decided to tell him the truth, age appropriate, and literally the first words out of his mouth was, please don't let mommy take me away. I asked him why he would say that, and from what he tells me, my wife has been treating him very badly when I wasn't around, and told him, if he told me, she would take him away and my son would never see me again. She has been emotionally torturing her son, and I was too blind to see it. That wrecked me more than the video to be honest. I told the lawyer about what my son said and he used my son's statement and her mental state and commitment to get the emergency custody. I have contacted his school for therapy resources and he will start therapy after the first of the year. I feel like the worst father to ever walk the face of the earth at this point. As for our families, her parents contacted me Tuesday and asked to come see us. I was still at my parents at the time and I told them they could come, but she was not allowed anywhere near us. They agreed. They were so apologetic and her poor mother didn't stop crying the entire time she was with us. Her father was heartbroken and kept referring to my wife as that girl. They both said they felt like 
Something was going on with her, and they did not raise her to be this way. We hugged and cried before they left, and I told them they will always be part of our lives no matter what happens with the divorce. After what my son told me, their visit was the hardest part of our whole ordeal. My lawyers have been doing amazing work so far. They found out that the man my wife was sleeping with has a long criminal record. One of the lawyers informed me that when they went to print out the guy's arrest record, the printer ran for five minutes straight. From what they could learn, he is currently on parole for drug offenses and has had gang affiliations in the past. He is still alive but in critical condition and still may not make it. The firm has an investigator who contacted the co-worker who drove my wife to the hospital. The co-worker informed them that my wife's affair was an open secret around the office. My lawyers think that's how the police figured out who I was and who my wife was in the video. There are several photos of last year's Christmas party at her work and my wife and I are in several of them. That's where I currently am in this whole situation. I'm just numb, still lost and heartbroken. How long does the numbness last? And is there any way to get past this emotional lethargy faster? I mean really numb, like a dream. Everything I've just said has felt like it's happening to someone else. No doubt, OP. These are huge blows. Your world has been drastically turned upside down. I'm so sorry that she's been treating your son this way. Shame on her. That's totally unforgivable. She's an absolute monster. You should be lucky you weren't the one burnt up in a car. Yikes. Update. Sorry for the novel, but I just needed to vent and get this week off my chest. I will start off again by saying thank you to everyone who replied to both my original and my update. This sub really did help me so much. If I didn't respond to you directly, I'm sorry, but I got so many messages, I can't keep up with them all. First, my son is doing so much better. He started therapy the first week of January, and the difference is already noticeable. I asked him if he felt comfortable with me talking to his therapist, and he said yes, so I've had a few discussions with her. According to the therapist, my soon-to-be ex would have verbally and emotionally abuse our son whenever they were alone together. He was not allowed to make noise or bother her in any way when he was home. She would leave him alone for hours on end, and even overnight if I was out of town. She would then threaten him with being taken away and never see me again, if he told me or anyone else. The therapist said this has made him feel powerless and dependent in a time in his development that she should actually be feeling empowered and self-reliant. So to that end, I have bought him his own phone and helped him memorize family members' numbers and as many addresses as are relevant. I've also been teaching him situational awareness to pay attention to street names and how to read addresses and buildings. We've also role-played how to ask people for help, how he can clearly explain to strangers that he's in trouble and he doesn't feel safe. I know this may sound silly, but my son can be a bit introverted and shy when he doesn't feel comfortable. Even though we've only been doing this for a few weeks, I can see that it's really building his confidence. Any suggestions on how to continue to build his self-reliance would be really helpful. His safety and well-being is still my number one concern right now. As for myself, I'm doing as good as can be expected. I started therapy around the same time as my son, and although I don't speak to my therapist as much as he does, it has helped to be able to talk through my thoughts and feelings about everything that has happened to us and our family. The numbness is gone, but it was replaced by a white hot ball of anger in the pit of my stomach whenever I think of my soon-to-be ex and what she's put her family through. Funny enough, although I hate feeling angry, it's a lot easier to deal with than the numbness. My therapist says this is part of the grieving process, and it's not how we feel, but how we channel those emotions that matter. My legal situation, well, I'll be honest, is the scariest thing I've dealt with in my life. I was awarded temporary full custody and child support, which I didn't want, but my lawyer pretty much demanded we ask for it, as well as a continuation of the order of protection for myself and my son. At the request for an order hearing, which neither my wife nor her lawyer showed up to, the judge asked if we would allow supervised visits, but my son absolutely refused, which was why my lawyer told me to bring him along. The judge asked my son if he would speak to him alone, and he agreed. The judge, stenographer, and a child welfare officer went into the chambers with my son and met for about 10 minutes. After their meeting, the judge granted the temp orders and ordered therapy and psychological evaluation for my son. Luckily, the therapist he is seeing is somehow involved with or accredited to work with the courts, so he doesn't have to see another therapist. My lawyer said 
This is a good thing because it means his therapist can give him a recommendation for custody. But it still scares the hell out of me that she could get some form of custody after what she put him through. As for the affair partner, I don't know much. From what my lawyers have gathered, he's still alive, but still in the hospital. I haven't heard from the police since my initial interview, so nothing new to report there. As for my soon-to-be ex, I still haven't seen her since D-Day. I was questioned until Thursday. She has attempted to call me a few times, but I haven't answered, and when she called from another number, I hung up immediately. I have nothing to say to her, and I don't want to hear anything she has to say to me. Her lawyer requested a preliminary hearing for our court-appointed mediation. She was served the second week of January. She was there with her lawyer, and I know this will sound petty, but even with the mask, she looked bald. My soon-to-be ex was always an attractive and athletic woman. I swear in our wedding photos, she looks like a supermodel, but now, while well, she's lost so much weight, it's disturbing. She looked sick and frail. He didn't even look at me, which just sat with her face down through most of the training. Long story short, everything they asked for was ridiculous. They wanted validation during the divorce proceedings and shared custody after. They want us to drop the OPs. She wants to cohabitate until the divorce is finalized. I'm not joking, after all this, she wants to live in the same house. It was so insulting that my head throbbed through the whole meeting, but it was all worth it for the big reveal we gave to her lawyer. Her lawyer asked how we should handle discovery for the division of assets, to which my lawyer got this shocked look on his face and said, what division of assets? Read the prenup. The look on her lawyer's face was priceless. She hadn't told her lawyer about the prenup. My late uncle, who was the founding partner of a law firm I use, wrote the prenup and actually hired her a lawyer to look over it for her before we married. According to my lawyer, it's a thing of beauty because we never mixed finances, per my uncle's instructions. The house we live in was a gift to me from my uncle before we married. All the utilities and insurance are in my name. All the vehicles are registered in the owner's name only, and we never had to sign for any debt for each other. We have one shared savings account that is used for household maintenance and an emergency fund. It has around $8,000 in it, which she has already drained. There's less than $300 in it now. The prenup states that all marital assets and debt are to be divided 50-50, and ownership of all intangible assets and personal debt reverts back to the individual who accrued it. The adultery clause simply states that we agree that if either party is caught or admits to committing adultery, they lose the right to claim any form of spousal support. There's a lot more to it than this, but my lawyer assures me that trying to break this prenup will be dang near impossible because it is the most fair prenup he's ever read. But the last thing her lawyer asked for was what was really messed with me. He asked that we postpone the official mediation for six months while my soon-to-be ex attends an inpatient rehabilitation facility for substance abuse. Some people in both my last posts stated that she might have a substance abuse issue, but I don't even think about it because I couldn't even fathom that. I talked to my lawyer and he said that we would discuss it and get back with them about our decision on that. Before he left, my soon-to-be ex spoke, literally for the first time, and asked me to read a letter she had written me. My lawyer gave me the, this could be a snake, so be careful, and I debated with myself for a moment, but decided to take it. When I got home, I read it, and now I wish I hadn't. It started off with all those busted cheaters platitudes that everyone warned me about. I love you. I love our family. I know I mistreated son, and I hate myself for it. I want us, again. But she did explain that after a major surgery she had about two years ago, she started abusing her medication. After a while, she started buying them from some of the people she worked with, including the fair partner. He became her go-to guy, and when she ran out of money, she started sleeping with him to make up the difference. She said she hid this from me because she was afraid I would make her stop, and she couldn't feel right without them anymore. That he meant nothing to her but a fix, and she hates herself for doing what she's done both to herself and to us. Now, she says she understands how awful what she's done is and wants to get better at for our family, and asks me to at least give her some time to prove she wants this. Let me state, for the record, I will never get back with my wife. Our marriage was over the moment she cheated on me and abused our son, but dang, where the F was I while all this was going on? I just feel like the most naive, obtuse idiot to ever walk the earth. And furthermore, 
How should I approach this from here? Am I just throwing her away? Or am I still justified in feeling betrayed? I feel like such a failure in a husband, and the father right now, I mean, I feel nothing to her but anger and resentment. But is this how you treat someone fighting the demons she's fighting? I'm just lost and feel so hopeless again. Anyway, any advice would be much appreciated here. Here we go with the advice from the community. Dr. Barnow will start us off. So I work with addicts every day. Most of them, like your wife, become addicted through medical reasons. Most of them do not abuse their children. This is unforgivable and addiction does not explain that. As to the affair, her addiction explains why it occurs but does not excuse it. Lion Tamer 74 wants to add, What an utterly tragic story in so many directions. That poor kid. Marcellans says, I hope he stuck to it and proved never go back there with her. That poor baby. Goners says, Wait, why did the cops have a sex video on a tablet ready to show OP? Is there... Is, is that explained later on? Edit. They found it in the guy's electronics and loaded it up to show during questioning? This sounds crazy. Also, anyone reading, for F's sake, ask a lawyer. Lucy Fell chimes in, got as far as the lawyer bit and went, nope. If the law firm is big enough to have both a family law and a criminal law division, they are too big for the entire firm to be representing a family friend for free. I don't care how good of a friend the dude's uncle is. I think what it's best is for you and your son to have nothing to do with this beast of a woman. Honestly, these people have a way of totally manipulating you into seeing what they want you to see. It's a shame that your son was so scared to talk to you about the truth and how he was being treated. You should absolutely not feel like you're throwing her away when she treated your son like that. She deserves no sympathy whatsoever. What she did was child abuse. You should run far, far away from her and protect your little boy from her at all costs. And just because you don't see it doesn't make you a failure. Just makes what she did all the more wrong. Everything she wrote to you in that letter was BS and it should be burned to a crisp just like a fair partner was. I said it. What about you? What are your thoughts on this? Thank you for joining us today on Our Space. Like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on our next video. We'd hate for you to miss out. If you want to listen to more stories from me, check out Our Lounge where I feature a larger variety of non-cheating related stories. See you there!